Welcome to Dog on the Plot and this very autumnal Saturday morning. I've had a fairly slow start to the morning. Um, I've uh, got up and watched Gardener's World. I like to watch Gardener's World first thing on a Saturday. Gets me ready for the weekend, gets me inspired to do all those jobs for the weekend that they have at the end. Um, if you have seen it, I did cry my eyes out at the end. So if you haven't watched it yet, you've, you've been forewarned. One job I did do this morning was um, turn over all the pumpkins. So I went along the windowsill, checked that they were all okay, um, that there was no rot coming. I did find one, just a small one, that was a little bit soft. So I put that aside to eat for dinner tonight. Um, but the rest were fine. But all I've done is just um, turn them over because they've been on the windowsill for just over a week now and I want them to cure evenly. So. One, one side has been facing the sunshine and oh, what sunshine we've had uh, and now I've turned them over so the other side gets a, gets a go. Um, I have got the pumpkins with the stalks pointed downwards so they're on their side. Now I think you're recommended to do that mainly because if you're curing them outside you don't want water to pool around the stalk and, um, and, and rot there. But mine are inside so obviously that's not an issue. Um, but I'm not sure if that's the only reason. So I've put them like that for now, uh, no harm, doesn't matter. And uh, when we get to Halloween, I might just prop them up the right way so that they look like a, a nice display in the window. So what about my jobs for the weekend? Well, well, <laughs> there's a lot to be done. Uh, I'm gonna make a list here now and um, hold myself accountable. And then at the end of the video, <laughs> we'll see how many we actually ticked off. But um, one of the things I do want to do is uh, get a bit of garlic in. So I think putting garlic on the allotment is going to require a bit more thought because of the clay soil and the um, flooding. So I want to make some space in the home garden. I think I've been feeling slightly overwhelmed by the home garden because it does feel just a little bit out of control. Um, but I think all I need to do, all I need to do is go around and sensibly work on one little area at a time and this weekend I could clear one space and put some garlic in. So we've got Halloween but um, we've also got another celebration for this weekend which I'll talk more about this evening. Um, so if you uh, want to join me in a little tipple later um, I've got a bottle of fizz that I'll be opening and we'll be doing a little celebrating together. So that takes us um, to the plot. Uh, the plot, the plot. Well, I've got um, rabbit poop to take down and cardboard to take down, so that's one job. Um, again, a little bit overwhelmed by the plot, as well as the garden. Um, also very out of control, especially in terms of weeds. There's part of me that feels like I just want to let the plot do what it wants to do. Just let it go. Uh, not let it go, go. Um, while I think about how I want it to look next year because I don't want to start doing a load of work but then I'm going to end up ripping up because I've decided to put raised beds in perhaps maybe um anyway but there are a huge amount of brassicas still sitting down there of course there are brassicas brassicas everywhere um and I do want to get those in I don't want to waste them and if nothing else it's roots in the ground which you know, is my kind of motto, or it's become my kind of motto. Crazy kids. So that, my friends, is the plan for this episode, and we'll see how much of that happens. Uh, right now, I'm going to finish walking the dog, and then I shall meet you in the home garden. Right then, into the home garden. So we ended with the Acer last week and I told you it would turn quickly. And look at that, it's magnificent, isn't it? I couldn't tell you what the variety is because it was here when I moved in, but 
this will be over in days and they'll, they'll, it'll all shrivel up and uh, fall and make a lovely mulch for all the hellebores that live underneath and as I said recently cannot wait for the hellebores but our attention this week is going to be on these beds so where do we start and this has really been my issue that I keep just coming out of here and thinking where do I start um, oh my god there are still sweet peas can you believe it look still going well done little sweet pea well done um, yes anyway what was I saying these beds these beds okay right well let's let's take them one in turn so this bed is fine we've got some more of the beans to harvest as they dry um, this is all winter greens there's a celery in there uh, there's a potentially a brassica um, and then along the side here when the beans come out the nasturtium will die off but for now that's fine so the one on this side we've got ochre that's doing well another big nasturtium which will eventually die off um, we've got parsley and we've got summer purslane but there are also some lens lettuce in there so that's a bit of a mix okay we've got the begonia bed that I still haven't done anything with and definitely need to lift some of these to overwinter so that could be a job for today and all of that ochre this is the, definitely the best ochre because I put them in several different spots around the garden to see where they would do best and um, yeah definitely there that has mo the most foliage right this side this is another winter salads bed ah this one has the brassicas in as well um, but mostly mizuba and the other one mibuna um, the poor apple tree is absolutely covered in uh, the perennial sweet pea there that's okay and the cherry tree has put on so much growth this summer really impressive okay on to the tall beds I mean uh, let me stand back a little bit but you wouldn't even know that there was a bed in there there is that much nasturtium it's still flowering it's still lush I mean it's climbing up look it's climbing up the arches I have not trained it up there it's doing its own thing um, what is actually in this bed other than one just one single nasturtium that has done all this is actually carrots so this was the second bed of carrots that i sowed and they're all in there um what i've picked so far from this bed has been a little disappointing and um, they were quite small <laughs> leaf on my head then <laughs> grab my tea um Whereas the first bed I did, which was this tall bed, um, was really impressive with the carrots. I mean, not as good as the ones on the allotment, but good. Um, this one is also planted up with winter greens. So they're all under there and they are all still looking pretty much okay, I think. So that's all right, cover those back up. Um, and the arches have got the remnants of the runner beans and again some that are drying that can come off eventually so it's probably the two big beds that have more potential for clearing and growing so let's see what we've got in here we've got bolted lettuce but between it is the celeriac uh, these are winter radish so they need to stay and hyssop at the end uh, this mallow this mallow's had its day and can come out oh little florence fennel <laughs> uh, let's transplant that to the greenhouse actually because we do have some room in the greenhouse salad bar um, because you know i put in that lettuce that had the lovely coloring on it it was called lightning or something like flash lightning um yeah the slugs love that at the whole lot every single one i put in gone um, so there are spaces now. The other lettuce, I think that was the Arctic King and there was another autumnal one. They were fine. They were fine. Oh, here's more fennel. So on this side, I've also got fennel here. Oh, but it's flowered. 
Oh yes, I remember. It, yeah, this one. It never did bulb up. So that can come out now. Okay, that's fine. That can come out. Obviously, the Taunton Dean Kale will be staying. We've got more ochre. The more nasturtiums. Um, we have some brassicas. Possibly a Brussels sprout. Doesn't look very bristly yet, though. What's this? Oh, these are dwarf beans. Yeah, not, not much came of the dwarf beans in this bed. They can come out. Oh, my God, we've still got... <laughs> these are the onions that I sowed from seed. They never did get very big. Should I just leave those? Huh. We'll have a think about that. What else have we got? What's this? Oh, parsnips. I've got parsnips in this bed. Oh, I mustn't forget that. Okay. Right. We won't be getting rid of those. Um, random courgette or squash that never did anything. So that can come out. Okay. Okay, so there's potential spaces in this bed, but I need to be a bit careful of what I pull. Right, final bed. What are you doing? What are you eating? Just grass. Okay. Right, the final bed. We have the two broccolis that I've harvested, but now I want the mini florets so I'm keeping those in another nasturtium uh, now this is mustard this is the and I'll have to read it Mr Hong mustard greens okay that's fine a um, couple of those you can come out but you um, are supposed to be I think a calette well, there's a lot of white fly, not much sign of actual calettes. Okay, oh, and a Brussels sprout there, very small. Didn't have much luck with Brussels sprouts last year either. Right, cutting celery. Ali, do I make a decision and get rid? I don't know. This has gone really woody, look at that. Oof. Wouldn't want to be eating that. Um, so that one can definitely come out. We'll have a think about the rest. Oh, but look. Little ladybird in there. <laughs> Three good kales. No, four. Look at that one at the back. That's fine. Um, and then in here we've got spring onions, <laughs> poor little beetroots, and the leeks that are still looking a bit, a bit weak. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll hope for the best. Let me just duck under. <laughs> the Jerusalem artichokes <laughs> and then step over one um, the sunken bed I don't think I can put anything in and also if you remember it's my plan to mulch that really heavily because um, things don't do as well as I think they should in that bed which is true actually of most of the garden beds and I do oh yeah I do want to get to the compost to spread some of that but <laughs> this is the ready compost and I seem to have piled a lot of material that needs to go into the current compost heap right in front of it. So there's a job. Ah, well, a little impromptu garden tour there. But definitely there are possibilities for clearing some space, mulching and then putting in the garlic. So garlic this is what I have so I've, it, all my garlic this year is saved garlic so these are the best bulbs um, that I had last year of all my varieties which of course I can't remember what any of them were um, there should be at least three if not four different varieties here one may be hard neck but I'm feeling the necks oh yeah hard neck very um, the rest are soft although that looks just like that one hmm. we'll see that one lovely size so I, I dried them as the bulbs I didn't divide them into cloves and I will only divide them into cloves when I'm ready to plant I think that's what you're told is the best way to do garlic um, but the elephant garlic I did divide into cloves 
um, because if you try and store it as the full bulb that's very difficult it's very difficult for it to dry in the center I think it's possible but you've got more chance if you divide them into the clothes um, so these are the ones that I picked out um, in the summer that I thought were the biggest and uh, healthiest looking so I saved 12 to plant um, last year most of my elephant garlic in fact most of my garlic I planted into the front garden so as the pumpkins came out of the front garden the garlic went in I'm not doing that this year because there's simply not space um, I've really filled it since the garlic came out but there is one garlic still out there so I decided to leave one bulb of elephant garlic in the ground there was nothing wrong with it and all my elephant garlic cloved up and was huge I'll pop a picture um, but I left that one in the ground because you can get elephant garlic to perennialize so that you have your bulb and then each of the cloves will just kind of grow another bulb so you'll get a cluster of the bulbs I'm not sure how it'll work I've not really seen anybody do it or hear, heard much about it but um, I'm gonna give it a go so little experiment these ones however I'm going to grow as instructed I'm gonna give them plenty of space so you can get some nice big bulbs again hopefully and what I was thinking about is because some spaces have um, freed up in here perhaps it would be a nice idea to try some of the garlic in the greenhouse which I've never done before while we're talking about the greenhouse salad bar let me just show you something so you might remember I planted some dwarf beans in here while the tomatoes were still in so I thought they would just sort of grow around the base of the tomatoes then it turned out that what I'd actually planted were climbers or well, they seem like climbers they've not climbed that far um, but what they have done it's produced beautiful beans that are ready to eat right now when the rest of my beans are pretty much all done so so that was a good idea so I'll try that again next year although I'll try and next year to pick the actual dwarf beans and not climbers marigolds still going oh and what I must do in here as well is um take the cucumbers out now they have they have had their day. One sec. <laughs> you might have just seen me go, ooh. Um, first, <laughs> that's that's it from the uh, the cucumber harvest of 2023. Um, but yeah, they, they did well, those cucumber plants. Sorry, you're wonky. There we go, that's better. Um, yeah, they did really well. I'm very pleased with the cucumbers this year. So that was from five plants. I did sow a lot, a lot more, but um, only those ones made it. But yeah, definitely enough cucumbers for me, actually. And I did pickle some as well, fermented them. Um, but the reason I made my face was because um, <laughs> the sweet potatoes are ready, aren't they? They must be. Look, foliage has died back. Or is dying back shall we do it shall we look if we've got sweet potatoes oh hello <laughs> don't think you were supposed to be in there oh that's cool yeah we'll add that to the list for this week but oh, the garlic. i've got lots more um smaller cloves that i've got for eating um but i have been gifting a few so i gave a couple to my cousin to plant and i'm pretty sure mark wants some um, Ali, do you ripe hair plot? Ali, do you want some elephant garlic? Do you do elephant garlic? Let me know because I owe you. Definitely owe you. Um, right. Okay, let's get some work done.
there we go we've done it cleared the area I can actually get to the compost heap that I need now isn't that just one of these things though that you have one garden job that you want to do but you need to do about five others before you can get to that point anyway um yeah so I want to just sweep this um and put these sweepings into the new compost uh, bin or the one that I'm currently using I've just filled that up with all this stuff um, you know what if I could give you one piece of good advice which I don't take it's that don't pile stuff next to your compost bins <laughs> yeah I had cardboard boxes I had loads of uh, organic matter I had rabbit bedding all of stuff that should be in the compost heap just piled next to it anyway it's done now so there we go there's the new heap uh, I cut everything smallish as small as I I can be bothered and there's the old heap that's covered in cardboard and now hawthorn um, leaves as well it's it does it look okay I can't really tell I'm gonna need to get in there which is uh, a messy job so I think I'm gonna break for lunch have lunch while I'm still relatively clean and then come out this afternoon and get filthy See you then. Right, I've uh, turned this a little bit and um, you know what, I'm pretty pleased. It's still rough. I don't think it's ready to, hello worm, ready to go on the beds. Um, I think it needs a little bit longer. It should be ready in spring though. So maybe I'll do my, my mulching in spring. Now what I was going to do was add all this spent compost to the compost heap so that it can be uh, reinvigorated by the um, homemade compost um, and also that all the roots in here can break down and add goodness to it but I'm also thinking maybe I need this spent compost just to mulch the beds where I do clear okay let's do that then let's keep this back um, and then any that's left over I'll put into the compost heap oh no I've got all this as well Oh, I forgot that. Oh, it's got, uh, is it four? Yeah, four tubs 
of spent compost in here as well. Oh yeah. Hmm. Now this compost was from blighted tomatoes and potatoes. So it doesn't want to go anywhere where I might put either of those next year. Although the more I've been reading about it, the more that I get the sense that it doesn't really matter that the blight doesn't last through the winter. It gets killed off um, and you're fine. Uh, but better safe than sorry? I don't know. But I don't think I'll be planting potatoes or tomatoes in these beds anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, let's do some clearing now then and see what actual space we've got. There are few things more satisfying than a freshly mulched bed. Ah, that's lovely, lovely. So what have we got left? The hyssop, the radishes, the celeriac. These two, I tasted um, one of the leaves. They weren't bitter, so I'm leaving those in. Two onions, randomly in the middle there. We can see the parsnips now, which is nice. There's actually some there. These were underplanted, so they were underneath the broad beans back when the broad beans were in, and um, I wouldn't recommend it. They didn't really get enough light. A lot died. I replanted some quite late, so I'm not sure quite which ones got longer and which ones didn't. I have had a little feel around at the base, and there are parsnips under there. They're not going to be the most impressive beasts ever, but we may have parsnips for Christmas dinner. I have left in the few brassicas, the ochre. I've tried to train up the arch a little bit here to free up space around the base and uh, put this one up, the Taunton Dean Kale. Um, I think that's it. So, where do we put the garlic? Okay, my thinking is, I'll do three here and three there with a quite wide spacing, but then that allows for a row of regular garlic in between. So that, that is, I think, the hard neck variety. That's good spacing, that's generous spacing. So you want, for the elephant garlic, sort of eight to 12 inches, so nearly 30 centimeters. Um, and that is a generous <laughs> 30 centimeters. I think that's more like 40, but I did um, three across the bed last year and that seemed to work to get nice big cloves. For the regular garlic, um, when you're dividing them from the bulb, you want to make sure you keep the base on there. So you want some base and um, uh, Dory, is that helping? I don't think that is helping. That's a big nose in the camera. Um, <laughs> and discard any ones that are overly small so you just want the fattest ones these aren't hugely impressive cloves but we'll see what comes of them i feel like because these have grown in my garden once before um they are accustomed to the conditions oh a bean there we go um they are accustomed to my conditions so hopefully they'll do better than they did last year um as saved saved cloves right 
So, depth. Elephant garlic can go quite deep actually, so pointy end up and um, about the bulb twice again as in terms of depth, so like 15 centimetres. Um, regular garlic, can I get the regular garlic without knocking you off? Oh, oh my goodness, chubby dog. Uh, regular garlic just below the surface, like you don't want to see the top but if you scraped the surface there the bulb, uh, there the clove would be. Um, and that's how I understand it, that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, right, well I can't, I can't plant it with you on top of me, can I? Can I? Fluffy dog, Mwah. fluffy dog, go on. Right, I do ask you to manage your expectations here. I don't think there's going to be much in there, um, but let's keep our fingers crossed for something. That is the loofah. <laughs> Try again next year. Now, I'm not saying it's the harvest of the year or anything, but look at that. Ah, that's amazing. <laughs> so the, this is the entirety of the harvest. <laughs> so uh, a couple of good sized ones. I forked a couple, so they'll be going in tonight's dinner, I think. Um, and quite a few that didn't quite make the mark. <laughs> I. I don't think there's much point eating that one. <laughs> I go, Dory. Um, yeah, and you know what? That's that's better than some of the potato harvests, regular potato harvests I've had. Um, I'm I'm pretty pleased with that. I mean, I pay, I got those plants reduced, didn't I? So I paid a pound each. There were two plants in there, so two pound that cost me with all the effort and compost and whatever. Um, but I don't know. That's probably still more than you'd pay in the shop but it doesn't have not even one percent of the satisfaction and joy that that does amazing amazing it's a bit of a funny shape gonna be hard to peel uh look at the color inside though oh, let me just wash it off there's lovely vibrant red skin and then there's the orange sweet potato inside uh, pretty chuffed with that I'm pretty chuffed with that that was a nice way to end the day only we've not ended the day sorry Dory we've not ended the day well I'm gonna feed Dory and I'm gonna take her for a walk 
and then um, we're going to get back together this evening and as I promised have a little celebration okay so I shall see you a bit later So last week we were talking about red letter days in the gardening year and this week I had a red letter day in the YouTube career. <laughs> so I don't know why I'm being coy about this celebration because it'll be in the thumbnail, <laughs> it'll be in the description. But yeah, this week Doria and I, dog on the plot, hit 1000 subscribers. Yay! We did Dory! Yay! I'm definitely that impressed. <laughs> Put Dory down to pick up my uh, my fizz and say thank you and cheers. One thousand subs. It's quite a milestone. So why is this a big deal? Well, of course it's not. You know, <laughs> any kind of perspective on this, it's not a big deal. But it is a milestone. And when I started the channel in January. Um, some of you will know I said I'm kind of committing to doing a year of the channel and um, but I didn't say that secretly I was hoping that by the end of that year I would hit a thousand subscribers and and I have so and a little bit early so that's really nice of course the other important thing about a thousand subscribers is it makes you eligible to be a YouTube partner which means that you earn some of the revenue from the advertising I don't think I'm going to be quitting my day job. It may contribute a little bit to my seed habit, so that would be nice. Um, but um, it turns out it's quite a lengthy process to get this set up. Um, so I am currently being uh, audited for copyright reasons by, um, by YouTube, and then eventually they'll let me know if I've been accepted into the programme. So Dory and I want to thank everybody who is a subscriber. Thank you for getting us to that milestone. We want to welcome all of those who are new. Um, I would say this episode up to now is pretty typical of what we do, wouldn't you, Dory? Yeah, um, we plan to do jobs, do a few of them, chat a lot, dog does naughty things. That's generally, generally how it goes, yeah. And then of course I want to thank all those who have been with me for a long time and supported the channel all you long-term viewers know who you are and I especially you know numbers are great and that's one thing but actually the real joy of doing this is the comments it's what happens below the line and the interactions with people so that that makes it worthwhile so all to all of those who regularly comment or have left one comment or are going to leave a comment on this one i thank you <laughs> you know i know my my videos are long and they're not necessarily the thing that youtube would tell you that people want but that doesn't really matter to me i make the thing that i like and I enjoy that other people like them. It doesn't have to be masses of other people as long as there's some and enjoying it. Hey? Yeah, we have fun doing it, don't we? We do. We do. Okay, there are too many fireworks going off for Dory. So we're going to head inside. You want to head inside? Go on then. All right, quick top up. Here we go. Cheers. Thank you. Dog on the plot, 1,000 subscribers, 100,000, here we come. <laughs> I will catch you in the morning.
Good morning. We're on the plot, only um, I've just nipped out to walk the dog. Um, Mark's on the plot as well this morning and he's brought a boot full of Belfast sinks and a table with a drying rack on it, which looks handy. And um, he's having some thoughts about the flooding issue and uh, what we can do about it. So I'll show you that when we get back on the site. Um, this morning, baked some bread. Uh, oh, and I edited what I um, filmed yesterday and realized we're already way over time. So um, we'll be keeping things fairly short for Sunday. Um, I did just want to come check the medlar tree. Here's the meddler in the community orchard. Let's have a look. Oh, still rock hard, but looking great. So many on here. Looking forward to those. That's pretty much all that's left in the orchard now anyway. Um, somebody came and got all the quinces, um, which is fine. I, I, I wasn't really too keen on quinces, um, but yeah, all the apples are gone now. Somebody's also had a good go at the comfrey. I say somebody, it was my mom. <laughs> but there's loads more here and in other spots on the park because this park used to be um, allotment grounds. Ah, here. There you go. It's spreading. So this will all be dying back soon. So now is the time to collect your comfrey, make comfrey feeds, or just add it to the compost heap and it'll all come back next year just fine. Well, a lot just happened. Um, Mark and I went down and um, raided the uh, like free for all area. Um, and I just got my own my own Belfast sink, a double one. I'll show it you in a second. And um, we got some piping and stuff that might help with the flooding. Um, Dory was too loud, too noisy, so I've just tossed her over the fence to Mom. And um, I was feeling a little bit dizzy, so Mom's um, found me a packet of crisps and. I thought she was going to put jam on it. I guess I'm having a crisp sandwich. That's fine. That's fine. So I'll just eat my sandwich and then um, we'll have a look around. Right then. So there's my new Belfast sink that I have just plonked at the front of the plot. Um, tried not to squish the raspberry behind it and also the people ID'd for me uh, what was it? Saranthi? Sar um, so I didn't want to squish that I must cut these dahlias actually oh they look great um, so these are all the Belfast sinks that Mark has brought down you can see he's done a lot of digging and then here is my brassica stash which has got to find homes. So this is the other thing we found. These big sheets of um, like wire fencing, I guess. Um, thought we could eventually do something with those. And we also found some piping, which we think we could perhaps put to use in helping with the flooding situation. Mark is currently digging this trench potentially thinking the trench might go all the way up to my plot there so that the water that pools here will drain down into that channel and then we can divert it down the, the road at the end here but uh, yeah <laughs> it's a work in progress. The other thing I brought down was some more cardboard uh, remember what I was saying about stacking things next to your compost heaps rather than in them? Yeah, it continues here as well. Uh, all of this matter is supposed to be in there, but I haven't really... Oh, look at all these nettles. 
I haven't really figured out this area yet. I cannot say that these compost bins are in proper working order at the moment. But that's definitely a priority because obviously it's a big plot. It needs a lot of compost. So I'm going to harvest a few bits. Um, there's some little tender stone broccoli and Romanesco cauliflower, little spikes, not actual ones, didn't grow an actual one. Um, and carrots. Oh, still tromboncinos coming as well because I didn't clear out any of the um, squash foliage really. Um, so what I need, I think, is a sort of manageable job to do right now. And getting those brassicas in would be a good, good thing to do. Okay, I know. This bed at the front is where I took the second early potatoes out of this centre bit. I've already got brassicas in this bit, which was where the first earlies were. Got two um, Austerian tree cabbages, got some lovely looking kale. This kaleette, oh, look at the colour. Is it a kaleette or is it a kale? Because I did have lots of different types of kale. Look, I've got curly kale there. That's definitely a Brussels sprout. Um, anyway, brassicas are in this bed already. So I'm thinking, let's clear this and get more brassicas in. Yeah? Yeah, let's do it. Well, there we go. <laughs> it's not beautiful, but it is roots in the ground. And relatively unweedy, which can't be said of any other bed on this plot. Will anything come of these brassicas? There's uh, kohlrabis, I think. Kales, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Maybe a cauliflower or two, who knows? Um, and there's still so many more to plant. It barely looks like I've made an indent. <laughs> oh dear. Oh well, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm, I'm glad to have got something done. And I think I feel like I did yesterday doing just that one bed and putting in some garlic. It's just making a start. It's doing something small, achieving that one thing, and then feeling like you could possibly go on and do more. Having said that, I'm not going to do any more. <laughs> not because I'm like worn out or anything, but um, I've got a Halloween party to go to in a bit. So we'll finish just by picking a few bits for dinner. And um, thank you for joining me this weekend. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I think I'm pretty pleased with what I got done. Very happy that there's some garlic in the ground. Very happy that I've actually put some brassicas in the ground. Still a lot more to go, but... If you are new to the channel, thank you for joining. Um, we did a bit of a tour of the home garden, but perhaps then we'd do a bit of a tour of the plot. So maybe we'll do that next week. I hope you had a good Halloween and take care. I shall see you next week.
think you should put all of this in. <laughs> <laughs>